The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Today we're going to finish building the MIDI guitar. We've already taken apart the MIDI controller, moved the components around, and scanned their locations into a computer. Now it's time to cut all the pieces we need to make the guitar and put everything together. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today on Ben News, I'd like to tell you about a project I'm working on for AMD. They've asked me to use some of their new Trinity APUs to make custom computers. Uh, what this is, it basically has your graphics controller and your main CPU in one package. So pretty convenient. We're going to be making the computers out of some interesting devices, putting them in some things you might not expect. So stay tuned for a future episode to check that out. In the previous episode, I scanned all of the parts from the MIDI controller into the computer. I was then able to design a cool custom case around it. Now I am using the CNC machine to cut this case using Sintra and wood. We've cut all the parts on the CNC machine, 3D printer, and the laser, and now we've got to sand them. Unfortunately, machines won't do that for us, but luckily Kevin's back to help us, and he's more than willing to help sand the parts for his project. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll start putting everything together. So I wanna make sure the edges are smooth. I ground them down on the grinder so they have a bit of a curve and now I'm sanding them with 150 sandpaper and then this fine grit stuff. So I 3D printed the buttons for a couple reasons. One, I wanted them to have a little bit of texture which we wouldn't get with an acrylic lighted button. Also I was able to give them a little bit of concavity for the finger. So I'm going to clean them off and then I'm going to glue them to these plates so they can be under the buttons. If we countersink these holes a little bit, it helps the screws line up when we drill the parts together. Those are gonna need a spacer. Kevin got another fun job for you. It involves funky foam. This is how we make up for engineering oversights. There's a gap here that I need to fix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 3D print a little spacer so I can stick it in here make sure this is nice and solid because we want the neck to be attached to the body in a very solid way and this gap is not very solid. Have you heard about Element 14 TV, the new online TV channel for engineers? At Element 14 TV, you'll find videos from some of the hottest names in engineering. Not only will you find episodes of my show, but also videos by Jerry Ellsworth, Arduino tutorials by Jeremy Bloom, and much, much more. Element 14 TV features some of the most innovative new products happening in engineering today that just might inspire you to try something new. You can also find the latest videos from the world's leading electronic manufacturers, all in one place. The entire video library is completely free, so join Element 14 today and tune into Element 14 TV, the brand new TV channel for engineers. This is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. Now we're going to attach the fret buttons into the neck here, 
and wire it to the original connections. And then these will work like the buttons down here did, hopefully. Kevin said that I can wire this up whatever is the most convenient for me and I like that logic. If you test it before you put it fully together, it'll work. If you don't test it and put it together, it won't work. Guaranteed every time. And the mixer works too. I made this riser portion in the back so there's room for the power supply and the switches. Then we'll put a plate on. So this should fit in theory, unless it doesn't. There's a decent chance of it. Again, we always wanna make something that we can open. So this is how it's going to open it. Always make things like a book. Now we're just putting on the final touches to make it look nice. So there you have it. We took a MIDI controller and we turned it into a MIDI guitar. It was an interesting challenge because I wasn't even sure what was inside the MIDI controller when I started this project in the last episode. But I figured out everything, moved everything around and made a pretty decent uh, guitar out of it. So now it's time to kick it. My rant today is about poor quality tools. You see them in a lot of big box stores, brands you've never heard of, but they're a great bargain, right? A 10 pack of star bit drivers for a dollar, hacksaw blades for 50 cents, or a $50 cordless drill. But then you might get five uses out of the thing before it breaks. You save money, but waste time. And time is money. I've got enough problems already when building things. Tools shouldn't be one of them. My rave today is about good quality tools, which save you time, frustration, and ultimately money by lasting much, much longer. I've had some stuff last me for decades, like these screwdrivers or this pocket calculator computer. Read reviews to find the best products, spend a little bit more money when purchasing, and if you're lucky, get some old time-tested tools handed down from you from your parents. Today's viewer question comes from Hamza, who asks, I'm an electronic hobbyist ready to step into the microcontroller world. Should I start with an Arduino, PIC, or AVR? I don't have much to spend on it. Well, I would suggest either starting with an Arduino AVR, which is the same thing, or a PIC-based chip kit, both available on element14.com. For those, you won't need a programmer, just a USB cable. But if you do want to use the AVR or PIC programmers later on, they'll also work with those boards. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be talking about glue logic, the low-level circuitry and gates that even in these futuristic times still come in handy for projects. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.